And um, there you can see what they eat. This is what you see flying around in the fall. Uh, that's a little watercolor, about two inches uh, big, of a milkweed bug. These are on the left, the two on the left are, are, are milkweed bugs uh, that I, they're about a half an inch long, maybe five eighths. And as all I did, you can do this too, it's fun. You take a piece of foam cork, cut a hole in it, and you can put anything in there, and you throw it on the scanner, and it does absolutely perfect. It's like you have $10,000 worth of equipment. So I just scanned it on one side and scanned it on the other. And I got those two things. So the, one, the actual bug? That's yeah, just scanned? the live, I, you put it in the fridge for about a half hour first. Cool it, you don't want to freeze it, no, kill it, but you, you cool it down and it just lays there for a couple minutes and you can do the job. Uh, on the right is an SEM, scanning electron micrograph, which is a specialty piece of equipment. I taught an online course for Montana State University before I started the current one. Uh, it was a, these are graduate science courses. And I, it was a, I worked with an entomologist, co-taught it, and she worked at the Smithsonian uh, Institution at the, in the uh, Natural History Museum and she's an entomologist. So she was able to take a milkweed bug and have it scanned. So we're gonna look at that for the minute. Uh, right, right in, we're gonna look at, oops, right in here, this little part here. The great thing about scanning electron micrographs is that there's almost no limit. You just can go deeper and deeper and deeper. So that's, you know, on this little tiny bug, you cannot see hairs with your naked eye. And, uh, and you, you know, it just goes from there. There's its leg, and we're gonna look at the end of the leg. Cool. It's totally cool, they're total landscapes. You know, I mean, I'm a landscape painter, and I just see everything as a landscape, including faces, when I, when I do those. And, uh, but I mean, it just, it gets me excited, you know, every time. And the forms are just endless. I mean, this is something, the, the legs on these things, when you see them, you can't hardly see their legs. They look like hairs. And it's all there, all this information is there. You know, so the further, the more you look, the more you see. You've heard that before, perhaps. There's its head, there's one of its eyes, a little hexagon, you know, uh, geodesic dome. Um, and that's a close-up. And I said, I, you know, I, I like to look close. And I mean, this is a landscape, hills and valleys. But each one of those is an, in, there's thousands of these on one little eye, which you hardly, you know, they're, they're smaller than, they're about, well, they're bigger than a period, I guess, maybe the, as big as a, an O in a printed book. Um, and there's thousands and thousands of these. Each one is a light receptor. So, you know, they, the information comes in and the insect can tell whether it's, you know, light over here or dark over here, and that's about it. But it's enough for it to function. Dragonflies have many, many more of these, and they can see far better. They can see you know, a mosquito from uh, a great distance and zoom in on and get it. But that's how it's done. These little bitty, each one is a little, it's like, I'm trying to think of a, of a way to phrase it, but it's, they're little receptors. And, and our eyes work the same way. We have rods and cones, and we can see color. These guys can't see color. And there's an eye. Now, this is a drawing. Uh, that I did, a little portrait, and it's pencil graphite on paper. So what you're seeing there in the, I mean, that's the white of the paper, all this, anything you see white, and, and so the graphite, I just build it up. It's, it's, when I do a drawing, it's essentially a glaze as well. I build up very slowly, you know, very, I start with a, a hard pencil and just, and work out of this, you know, the basic structure and then come in and just build up that tone, a little darker and a little darker. It's hills and valleys. I mean, that is a landscape. Hills and valleys, little dark secret places, all the things I like. And that's the portrait. Uh, now, my one of my favorite artists is Chuck Close. And this is when he was young, and he does these eight foot, I, I'm, I won't assume that you know who he is, but, but most of you probably do. Uh, he does these eight foot high uh, paintings. In the early days, he used an airbrush. You can see him, how he worked there, pretty much. Uh, that's the finished portrait, which is probably about that big, actually, now that I look at it. And, um, and that's a close-up. And again, this is all done with a brush and airbrush. You know, but that's how he worked in those days. So um, I like this one even better. He just took a photograph of himself, that's him, and uh, gritted it. 
And that's the finished portrait about that size. So again, black and white. A uh, couple details. You can see how he developed it. So he's looking, you know, he's doing the same thing, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a different process. Now, 30 years later, he did another portrait, and this is how he works now. Photograph, takes, grids it, and you have to squint. Everybody should squint to see that. And once you do, you realize everything's there. All the information that you need is there. But it's, you know, based on this idea about units of information. So E.O. Wilson said, his quote is, the common property of art and science is the transmission of information. So we're going to talk about that for a minute, which is the idea that how he worked. There, there you can see him working. You can see at the bottom how he's got the white line, which is the photograph over to the left with the white line. And uh, he's, he hasn't been able to walk for since, I think, 88. So he, and this thing, the canvas is able to go up and down, and turn around, and do all this other stuff. So he's there, just adds these little blobs. That's what it really is. They're, and when you get closer, they're four inches on the side, and they're just blobs of paint. But when you see it from across the room, from 40 feet away, it looks like a photograph. Now that's true of just about everything we know. We gestalt things. You, have, you see a wall, you, and it's made out of brick, you don't say, oh, look at those thousands of bricks. You see, you say it's a wall. We just gestalt it. And we do the same thing here. This is how the brain works. 1,500 years ago, they were doing mosaics. Same exact concept. Each little rock is a certain size. They pick them for the size and the color and add them together. And you have a, a portrait. And, you know, and, and it works. I mean, these were very powerful to the people who viewed it at the time. Uh, this is back to Chuck Close. This is, uh, I don't think it's, I don't, can't remember if this is eight feet. I think it's not. It's a little smaller. But it's made up of uh, pulp paper, you know, paper, that, handmade paper that he takes chunks of and puts together. So these are all units of information that tell us something about something, you know, that relates to something in real life. It's an interpretation. This, you can't really tell, but it's a point to Elizabeth, Surat. So our brain does the work. Now this is a typical thing printed that you'd see, 72 dots per inch. You can actually count the dots if you're real patient. You know, so what that means is that there's not much information there. You know, it's enough. We can tell what it is. Um, that's 300 dots per inch. There's millions of little dots. And, you know, and of course, this is a digital projection, projection but the, the printing dots are still there. And on a glossy magazine, you know, any glossy magazine that you see on the newsstand is made up of all those little tiny dots. We'll see a little bit more of that, I think, next. There's the 72 on the left. 300 on the right. Uh, so this would be, I do, I do this with uh, little kids, so they like this, but it's the same idea. This is a, a photograph I just scanned from a book. And you start looking closely, you start seeing the grid structure. And maybe you've all done this. You've taken my divine glass to anything that's been printed. You'll see this. And you know it's a four color process. So all books, all magazines, everything is done, for the most part, with four colors, black, cyan, yellow, and uh, magenta. And you can see them all there. And they're, they turn them 45, uh, 45 degrees each time to avoid the moiré pattern, but, and which, is, which is what produces that grid. But again, it's units of information. We, we see this as that. But on this level, that's what we're working. That's where Chuck Close got started. I mean, you know, if you look at this, you can understand a little bit more about what Chuck Close does and how he does it, and how he makes blobs look like something from across the room. Uh, and of course, you're all familiar with pixels, you know, so you can count these pixels. Not much information there. There it is. There's millions of little pixels now, and I don't think you can count them. And this is a digital projection. So it's the same, same basic concept. Now, this is just for fun. But <laughs> because there's all kinds of ways of doing this. This is in Japan. You can see the, the fields there with these figures on them. And when you look, I mean, these things, well, this will give you a sense of the scale. And the way that's done, units of information, rice, different varieties of rice, 
that uh, they, they, they plot, just like the corn mazes. You've seen, all seen corn mazes from the air. You know, they look very photographic. It's done with a the computer. They plot out the land. The same here. And uh, I like that the fact that they use different color rice rather than the corn, but it's the same concept. And there's fun things like this, which is, you know, I, I really enjoy this one. But it's this exact same idea. You put these things together, and you see the larger picture. And, and this, again, you have to squint. But once you squint, it's remarkably subtle. It's, you know, it's just amazing to me. Every time I look at it, you really can see who this person is. You get something about his character, his personality, all this is stuff. Is that Walter White? Hmm? Is that Walter White? I have no idea. <laughs> I, was, I got it from a magazine or someplace. But it, you know, it, just, it just really struck me. Because again, when you squint, you see it. And, but when you open your eyes, you go, oh, how do they do that? But it's a, it's a Chuck Close thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a mosaic thing, really. Now, this is a drawing. OK, so same thing. It, it, you know, the, the dark parts are just graphite on the, you know, the paper is a rough paper, so it sticks up a little bit. And it catches some of the graphite. And some gets more than other places. And you can control that with an eraser and, and how hard you press and all this stuff. So you get back and start to, to see the, the form developing. <coughs> this is a pencil drawing about two feet by three feet of a sycamore, of a sycamore tree. And you can just get a little idea of working. And I'm working down on that level. And I use my eraser as much as I use the pencil. I go back, I'm, but I'm drawing with the eraser. The eraser is helping me form the, the, the basic you know, understanding of it. I'm not just taking things away. I'm actually drawing with it, lightning, doing all the things. Um, there's the finished drawing. And that's what I work from to start. So it, you know, there's all this, it, a lot of interpretation going on. And uh, so. um, this is a, a portrait, a fairly typical portrait. Uh, I start with a very light pencil drawing. And that's just uh, yellow ochre. I guess I put a little blue in the eyes because it looked really weird without the blue. And yellow ochre has a tiny bit of red in it, so it has a little tone there. So, but this, so I use yellow ochre and then uh, uh, magenta and, and a Windsor blue. Uh, this is watercolor. So then a little bit more yellow, a little bit more blue, a little bit more red. And a little bit more. Just, you just keep building it up, and there's the finished portrait. So, and that's a watercolor about, you know, probably 9 by 12, something like that, for a portrait. Um, this is a landscape from the, uh, yellow, uh, the Butternut, uh, the uh, Monarch book, and it's the opening scenes, this place near the, where I, I, I live. And I, so I did sketches, I took photos. This is the, the main photo reference I, I used. And um, so it's pretty busy, probably not too interesting. So I start, again, this, in this case, no pencil, just the brush, Windsor Newton blue, oil on canvas. And uh, just block it all in, get all the basic structure there, the, the, the tonal range in a, in a rough way. And then I go back with maybe a smaller brush and start adding more structure, more detail, but still keeping it very loose. And then I start adding, just glazing in the, uh, and, I, and, and the blue, even on the blue, I build that up with glazes. In other words, you know, when it really starts, it's just very, you hardly can see the blue, and it's a, like a blush, and then I come back in when it's dry and go over it. And glazes have been done since the Renaissance, uh, or before, and it gives that magic depth. You know, it, it, your eye sees differently, because the light's going through all these different layers, and it scatters differently on each layer. So it gives you something that is very difficult, if not impossible, to do with opaque painting. So then a little bit more color. Now here I probably use the, I use the primaries plus the greenish umber. I love greenish umber. And uh, it just makes it a little easier. So this is almost done, getting there. Notice the little house down there, the little garage that just disappears. Because um, it really just grabbed your eye. You know, I really didn't, you know, I just didn't need it for what I was doing here. Bugging the hell out of me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad. Um, and as it happens, you know, this is a good story that the, you have to read the text. You know, illustration is a little different from just doing whatever your desire is. Um, and so 
I didn't read the text closely enough, and the first lines of the book where this was, it says, you know, on a, on a summer day. Well, this is not a summer day, this is early fall. And so rather than rework that, I did a separate painting. And I moved things around, you can see. I just want to go back and forth a little bit. So I took things out, beside, you know, I had already taken that house out, and I, you know, and there's a detail of uh, the first one, the same one in the second painting, and that's the reference there. 